Yo, what's up, world? It is your boy, Filosco here, reporting live as usual. And I have decided that, yes, I'm going to start the whole Breaking Bad series. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the first episode. I'm going to take my glasses off. And I'm, I'm going to start from the first episode and go through every episode. And each time I see something that's interesting in each video, I'll speak about all the interesting things in which I saw in that episode. So, of course, I'm going to start from the first episode. And I have about 12 things here, so we have to get to it. I can't waste too much time, and I will use this space over here to write down what I'm talking about, and definitions and sentences or whatever. So if you're not watching this from your computer, you might want to watch it from your computer because some mobile devices cannot read the YouTube annotations. So let's get to it. One of the first things I want to teach you was from this sentence. Skylar. Skylar says, I don't want him dicking around with you. She was speaking about his boss, her husband's boss. When you dick around with someone, that means you're not taking them seriously. You're playing games with them. And in this case, uh, the boss had Walt working longer than he should, but wasn't paying for those extra hours. That doesn't happen too much in America, because you could get sued and all. But he was dicking around with Walt because he wasn't taking him seriously. That's dicking around. The next thing I want to put here is um, Bob Dunn. He was the boss of Walt at the car place or whatever. He says to Walt, he goes, I need your help. I'm shorthanded. When someone is shorthanded, that means they don't have enough help. When you see you have hands, these are your, this is your hand and this is your arm. A lot of people get that confused. But hands symbolize help. So when you see someone, you think they need help, you can say, hey, do you need a hand? I can give you a hand. And that just shows how hands symbolize help. Shorthand means not enough, not enough help. And something that isn't about English, something I realized, uh, when um, Walt's in the classroom and that guy is talking to the blonde girl being disrespectful, look at how ugly the blonde girl is. And she's supposed to be sexy you know, on American standards, I guess. But check out how ugly the blonde girl is in the classroom that the boy's talking to. You'll be surprised. Remember, I told you that first. Okay. And something else that was kind of ironic, I don't know if they meant to do it, but there was a scene in which Walt... Like, his heart starts hurting and he starts coughing and he sees a real beautiful woman, then he falls down. He just falls out. He passes out. Now, what's interesting is when you see a beautiful woman, you can tell her something like, wow, you knocked me off my feet. Which is interesting because he saw a beautiful woman and he passed out. He literally got knocked off his feet. Now, I'm not saying it was because of the woman. I'm pretty sure it's because he's sick. But it's pretty ironic, you know, when you see a beautiful woman, you can say, wow, miss, you knocked me off my feet, which means she's very beautiful. It's kind of cool. Um, and there was also a scene in this episode where Walt, where Bogdan, his boss, wanted Walt to wipe down cars or whatever. And he got upset. And Walt was like, you know what? Wipe down this. And he grabs his penis. Now, a lot of Americans do that. A lot of Americans do that. You can do that with anything. So if, let's say, if my friend was like, or my girlfriend, and I'm mad at her, she goes, Phil, Clean your room. I can just grab my penis and say, clean this, and then just walk out. It's just something that we do. You use it with anything, any verb. Someone can say, like, um, walk to the store. I can grab my, my penis and say, walk this, and then just walk away because I'm upset. A lot of Americans do that, and that's something you can do. Okay, there was a scene in the car with the DEA agents, and one of the DEA agents, the, the guy Hank, I believe his name is Hank, he says to the other guy, Gomez, I believe his name is, he says to him, uh, they were, he goes, 20 bucks, he's a beaner. They were betting on the ethnicity of the drug dealer. And a beaner is basically, it's a kind of a bad term for a Mexican, a Hispanic person, you know, a Latino. So if you hear a person calling a Mexican a beaner, that's kind of disrespectful. But unless they're really close friends, it's not disrespectful. But if you're saying it about someone you're not really close, close to, it's disrespectful, so I wouldn't want to use Beaner like that if I were you, unless you really, really know the person and you're really good friends. Okay, that's Beaner. Um, on to the next thing. Um, something interesting about Walt's pronunciation. When he was talking to Jesse about the house, he says, Is this your aunt's house? Aunt. Some people in America say aunt, but a lot of other people say aunt. I personally, me and my family, we say aunt. But my family down south, they say aunt. So you can pick whatever you want, aunt or aunt. I prefer aunt because if you say aunt, it can be confusing with an ant on the floor, the little insect, or your aunt. So aunt is only one thing. Ant could be two things. So I prefer to use aunt. Okay? On to the next thing. Um, Walt, when he was speaking to Jesse, 
He told Jesse, he was like, look, all your stuff got taken away, your boy got arrested, you basically got to start at square one. Now, what is square one? When you tell someone they're at square one, that means they're at the beginning. They're basically starting all over or just starting from the bottom. Basically like a uh, Drake song, started from the bottom, now we're here. You could have also said started from square one, now we're here. It's the same thing. That's starting from the beginning. Square one. Okay. When Jesse was having a conversation with Walt, when they were getting all the drug equipment stuff together, the lab equipment, um, Jesse says to him, you flunked me, prick. Now, when you flunk someone, that means you fail them. So basically, Walt failed Jesse in their class. Jesse didn't get a high enough mark to pass. He failed. That didn't mean he kicked them out. It just means he failed them because he didn't do well enough. And a prick is a, ba is a basic insult, and it also means a small penis. Okay. Uh, Jesse uses this term a lot. It's called the bomb. When something's the bomb, that's slang for being awesome, really cool, just excellent. That's what the bomb is. So you don't want to use this at airports. You want to avoid the word bomb at airports. But anywhere else you can say the bomb, that's cool. doesn't mean anything that bad. Okay. <clears throat> then when, um, and notice after that, Jesse uses the word faggot. Now, it had nothing to do with homosexuals. He was just saying faggot as a general insult. So I just want to throw that in there. You will hear that when you watch the episode. Um, then Jesse also says in this, he goes, I don't shit where I eat. Now, I don't shit where I eat is a very, very common phrase used by people who are hustlers, especially like people who do illegal things. Now, what this basically means is not to do illegal things where you live. You don't want to do it. So if you sell drugs, you don't want to sell drugs from your house. If you make drugs, you don't want to make drugs at your house. And if you like sell guns, you make guns, whatever you do, you don't want to do it at your house. And shitting, what does it mean to shit? Well, to shit means to go to the bathroom and do number two. Like make kakashka, you know, however you may know it. That is shitting. That's to take a shit. That's shitting. Using the bathroom. So um, basically, literally, no one wants to shit where they, where they eat. You don't want to shit in your kitchen. You eat food in your kitchen. It should smell good in your kitchen. You don't want to shit in your kitchen. That's disgusting. So that's why they say, I don't shit where I eat. Basically, you don't do bad things where you live. It's not smart. Okay, next thing. Um, Jesse says, it will be great if we could drive out to the boonies. Now, what are the boonies? The boonies are the boondocks. And the boondocks... It's a, it's a regular word. It's proper English. Boondocks is a place where not a lot of people live and there's usually a lot of trees. It's basically what he meant by this when he said it in this sentence was big empty space. Big empty space. There weren't any trees where they were, but it's still a big empty space and some people refer to as the boondocks, which he says for short as the boonies. Big empty space, very big, where not a lot of people live. Okay. Um, now, the best quote of the whole television show was this one right here. I'm going to read the quote, then I'm going to break it down for you, okay? Jesse says to Walt, uh, you got to tell me, some straight up like you, giant stick up his ass, all of a sudden at age 60, he just decides he's going to break bad? Now, I'm going to break this down for you. Some straight like you. When someone's straight, it could be two things. You could be straight as in you're a heterosexual, as you're a man who has sex with women, or you're a woman who has sex with men. That could be straight, but in this case, it's short for straight edge. And when you're a person who is straight edge, you follow the rules. You don't break rules. You're a very good person. So what he's saying here by straight is straight edge. Then after that, he says, giant stick up his ass. Giant stick up your ass basically means you're a serious person who follows the rules. It's, serious, it's similar to straight edge, it's just more of uh, more serious with it. Like you just don't break the law, you're a good person. Um, giant stick up his ass, all of a sudden at age 6, he just decides he's going to break bad. What is breaking bad? Becoming bad. Basically, it's simple. Breaking bad is becoming bad. Getting into bad things. That's breaking bad. Now, um... Oh this, oh, this one is very graphic. This one is very graphic. I will try my best to explain it, but I laughed when I was watching it. I was with Sasha. You know, she lives with me. She got mad at me for laughing. But this is really funny. There was a scene in this episode where the son, Walt Jr., was trying on pants. And, you know, he's crippled. He can't walk right. And some boys started laughing at him. They were making fun of him. One thing one of the boys said was extremely funny. I couldn't help but to laugh. He says... Mommy, help me. I think I pinched a loaf in my underwear or in my big boy pants. But pinching a loaf, 
this is very graphic, but you know what? I'm going to explain it to you. There's two things that pinching a loaf can be. One, pitching a loaf could be taking a shit, going to the bathroom, doing number two, you know, kakashka. But the other one for pitching a loaf is very graphic. I'll try my best to explain this. When you pinch a loaf, that's when the shit is coming out of your butt, but it won't fall out. Like, you have to jiggle, but it's still, it's still not falling out. It's staying there. So when you pinch something, pinching is basically squeezing. Squeezing. So what happens is, when you pinch a loaf, which is the shit that's still in your butt, some in, some out. When you pinch a loaf, you're squeezing it, and you're breaking it. And it falls out, and so it makes your butt very nasty and messy. That is pinching a loaf. It's when you're, you're trying to squeeze it, it won't all come out, so you have to break it in half with your butt. So yeah, it's pretty nasty. That is, that's... Pitching alone. That is pretty graphic, and I hope no one's too offended by that. But yo, you want to learn adult stuff, welcome to it, okay? Now let me finish this off. I don't want to go on too long. Um, when Jesse's an idiot. When he says, I think I see a cow house, what he meant was a barn, but he's an idiot. Um, oh, and then Jesse once said, every jib, jib head from here to Timbuktu is going to want to hit. They're going to want to try it. Now basically, jib head, someone who does drugs. Now, people do say from here to Timbuktu. That just basically means everywhere. So I could say, if it were true, I'm not saying it is, but I could say, yo man, everybody from here to Timbuktu watches my videos. That would mean everyone watches my videos. Everyone, everywhere. From here to Timbuktu. Just like that. Um, two more to go and I'm finished. Um, Craze, the guy who's a drug dealer, he had the dog, he says to Jesse, he says, Talking about his cousin, he goes, he thinks you dimed on him. He thinks you dimed on him. Now, what does it mean to dime on someone? When you dime on someone, you tell the police. You basically snitch. You're a rat. You could be a, you could dime out on them, be a snitch, or be a rat. They're all the same thing. That's when you're telling the authorities about the bad things someone else is doing. Especially when you're involved. So if me and my friend, we are going uh, buying guns. But the police come and I say, uh, he, he bought guns, him, this guy. I don't know anything about it, just him. I heard he does it. I don't do it. I dropped a dime on him, you know? I dimed on him. I ratted, I snitched, I told on him. And last one, um, at the very end, uh, the drug dealer Emilio is holding a gun to Jesse's head and he goes, we should cap them both. When you cap somebody, you shoot them with a bullet from a gun. Bam. That simple. And before I go, this song was a song at the end of it. Isn't this the name of the song? This song is called Out of Time Man by Mick Harvey. This is the song they play at the end. So if you want to download it or something or listen to it or contact it, go ahead. This is the song. And I'm out, people. Hope you enjoyed it. Episode 2, coming tomorrow. Later.